It's time for more fundamentals and tuning. Today we're talking about mass airflow, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and we've got another topic and a fundamental level of getting started in tuning and that's understanding how mass airflow works. Now, mind you, not every vehicle uses a mass airflow air calculation solution, but most of them do. If you hear the term MAF, M-A-F, that's what we're talking about, mass airflow. And essentially what it is, is a sensor that's going to take an input reading of the amount of air. And when I say air, the mass of the air, and then uses that to generate the fuel delivery. And so a lot of the different maps out there are going to read differently. GM notoriously reads in Hertz, whereas uh, maybe Dodge and Ford reads in volts. And so a lot of this information is going to carry over from one to the other. Just realize that the units may be a little bit different, but we want to take a look at exactly how the mass airflow works. So let's jump over to the whiteboard and take a look at some of these things. Originally, back in the day before mass airflow was around, uh, there was an earlier uh, kind of technology where, imagine this is in your intake duct and you have a device here and it had a flapper. Now, as air was accelerated through, that flapper would move back and forth. Now, the further that the flapper moved back, the more volume of air that the engine was breathing, the more fuel that provided, and the more that went to the left or closed, the less amount of air. Wasn't that uh, reliable, wasn't that accurate, but back in the early days of fuel injection, you know, accuracy didn't take a lot. Then you start seeing some that looked more like this, and it might have a airflow straightener on it, but it would have a probe in the middle of it that's a hot wire probe. Now, the reason why the old ones used an airflow straightener like this is because mass airflow is really dependent on how laminar the flow is across the sensor. Now, the hot wire sensor, which uh, probably look a little bit like this, and it'd have a hot wire down here at the bottom that was exposed to the airflow track. And as air blew past it, it pulls heat out of that uh, wire. You'll often hear them talked about as being a hot wire math. Now the design of the unit itself, the module, is to keep this at a certain temperature. So let's just say 140 degrees. So as air blows past that and cools it off, it applies more voltage or frequency based on how the math is set up to maintain this 140 degree target. By maintaining that, we get an output reading, 1 to 5 volts, or, you know, could be 0 to uh, 7,000 hertz, something like that. And that output reading is directly proportional to how much power it takes to maintain that 140 degrees. And that's kind of the... Uh, brilliant thing about mass airflow is because it takes into account the temperature of the air. If the air is cooler and thus denser, it's going to take more power to maintain that set point on the sensor itself. Whereas if the air is warmer, it's going to take less. And so we're getting an actual reading of the air density, mass, all those things are taken into account from just that hot wire reading. Now, a lot of mass airflow sensors would also report back uh, air temperature and stuff like that, but that air temperature would be used on something like volumetric efficiency or speed density, whereas the MAF itself uh, just relies on the mass of the air, which is then, in most ECUs, these outputs here are transferred over on a MAF curve that you'll see that you know curves up like this, and any one point on this curve is going to be uh, relational to the amount of air. And it oftentimes you'll see it in pounds per hour. 
Now that pounds per hour is a direct relation to the pounds per hour worth of fuel flow. And so we know that if we've got a uh, hundred pounds per hour and we're targeting 14.7, we've got 1.47 pounds per hour of fuel. Okay. So we can take our airflow divide it by our stoic or our commanded airflow if we're in eq or something like that and get our fuel flow for the same period right there that's how all that matches up so this is the kind of uh mass airflow that we would see in early gms uh you know earlier cars up until the uh, probably early to mid 2000s so later came the card style which just looked like that portion of it it wasn't in a canister or a piece of tubing that you installed and why this has a benefit over the one that you know we looked at that looks like that is that this one we could change the sizing of the duct and by changing the sizing of the duct we change the resolution it has to be calibrated anytime that duct sizing changes though because suddenly the surface area of the temperature reading that we're taking has been increased or in some world it might be decreased and that is part of that math curve why we calibrate that because whenever we have a smaller duct in here it's going to take less airflow to extract the temperature from the hot wire but whenever we have the bigger duct we're going to need more airflow to keep to get that thing to cool down or cause higher frequency or higher voltage readings to the ecu so keep that in mind uh, the old style though where it was a set maybe say two and a half inch uh, insert that we was on the intake track we ran out of scale on that. So if you were to turbo it or something like that, you could max out the output pretty easily whenever you got into boost and things like that. But with the uh, the LS3 style, as it were, or the card style mass airflow sensor, we can go to a bigger duct that would lower the Hertz output. And by lowering that, it gives us more range in the math curve for fueling. Last but not least, before we jump off here, let's take a look at an actual math curve so we can see what we were talking about. Here is our Hertz reading from our math sensor across the top, and this is our pounds per hour for the air. Uh, you can break this down even further. This is for the total uh, air that the motor is breathing. You can divide it by eight to get individual cylinder air. As I said, you can divide it by your commanded AFR to get the, uh, or your, uh, you know, whatever the conversion is to get your AFR. If you're looking for 14.7, that's 14.7 parts of air per part of fuel. You can use that map to get your fuel delivery, things like that. And as you can see, let's jump over and look at something else here. We'll look at a Mustang where this uses airflow versus voltage. And the table is flip-flopped, but it's still the same thing. We can open it up and you can still see that's a math curve in which uh, we are taking a voltage signal. In this case, 0 to 4.5 volts and we're getting our pounds per hour there we are so that's what it relates to once we you can see up to half a volt it's 21 pounds per hour but it all works the same and the theory behind all all maths nowadays is the same hot wire simple theory everything works nicely together uh and honestly once we got away from the ones that were pre-installed in a set size duct we got a lot better mass airflow sensors, not only because we had the ability to change the duct size, which in turn gives us more scalability on the airflow readings, though you still have to be aware of the cap on an ECU because some ECUs will cap out at a fairly low pounds per hour worth of air reading on the math scale. This hasn't been much of an issue since probably 2005. Uh, but that could be another limit that you would hit that would cause you to have to go over to a speed density style tune. But modern day stuff, 
no problems whatsoever. Most of them, in fact, I just glanced over at the Mustang and it'll go up to 18,000 pounds per hour. Is that right? Oh, no, 20,599 pounds per hour worth of airflow, which is more than you're ever going to be able to jam into a Coyote. So we have that expanded range of tunability and they're super easy to tune. It is a curve versus a 3D table. So they're quicker to tune, very accurate, uh, very resistant against weather and temperature changes because it is a mass reading, uh, which we'll talk about VE or speed density in the next video and why that thing is very dependent on temperature bias and having a correct temperature uh, bias table in there to make adjustments for the amount of air. Because it can seem, as far as the VE goes, it's looking at engine speed and manifold pressure. And in that cell, there can be a lot of deviation based on, uh, you know, the temperature of the air in there. It can't, you know, from a base calculation, can't determine that. And so it has to have multipliers and math by it. Whereas the math mass airflow does not because it is reading direct mass on the air so hopefully this gives you a little better insight as to how mass airflow works on these tuning platforms and this is a good one to keep in the back of your head because having this knowledge makes it a lot easier listen hopefully this helps you guys out you guys know the drill thanks for stopping by the garage remember abt always be tuned